Okay, in this video we've got an Xbox One X. The HDMI um, signal seems to be causing us a bit of an issue. The HDMI port itself seems okay, uh, at least from what we can see. So we're just going to investigate that a little bit further and see why it's not displaying any uh, anything. And we're just going to start by removing the two screws, get the uh, cover off and then we'll be able to get all the other screws out and actually get to the main board okay we're gonna start by removing all the torque screws uh, get everything sort of unplugged remove the metal housing and then that should give us access to the disk drive hard drive and CPU fan and the top of the board And there'll be two torque screws on the other side as well, just remove them, uh, remembering where they go as well because that's quite important. And once they're removed we should be able to flip it over and remove the uh, top metal lid. And once we've lift lifted the uh, lid off, we're presented with a power supply. Um, disk drive and fan we'll start by removing the disk drive that's just the SATA cable and the power cable um, SATA cable can be a bit of a pain to get out then we'll remove the hard drive again another SATA cable another power cable once they're removed if you've undone all the screws then you'll be able to remove these obviously it's not going to uh, undo from the hard drive point because it's all screwed in at the bottom eight screws in total to uh, get the hard drive out but just as just as a test of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another hard drive in it um, one that I know works give it a quick test because sometimes no display can sometimes be a faulty hard drive I've had this problem a few times where I've gone hunting for the wrong thing so just to roll it out, I don't think it is, but just to roll it out. Yeah, and after a quick test it made no difference unfortunately, so we'll get that and we'll carry on the uh carry on the tear down. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the fan, I'm gonna give it a quick clean down as well. Um 
so the way I've done this is a backwards way for some reason um, usually you take power out first and then you're able to lift it but I've somehow managed to get it out this way but once you've removed them too Uh, you can undo these sooner and actually work on it sooner, but I find while it's still in the metal housing, it's it's not going anywhere. So we're just going to undo the four torque screws that are holding in the uh, heatsink. And once we've got the board out, obviously you can see on the back there's the X clamp. Um, these little paddings that you see, there's one on the bottom of this um, tray. There's also a few knocking about on the board. Uh, just be careful not to lose any or sort of misplace them or damage them because they are quite important. But we're just going to remove the X clamp now, and I really don't like doing this part. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a flat bladed screwdriver and ever so gently pry up on each corner just so it sort of pings up. As soon as you've got two corners, it makes the job so much easier, obviously. And once that's up, we're able to separate the uh, heatsink from the CPU. Okay, now that we've got that off, um, as you can see it's got these sort of like little mould heat, heat um, pads and I've tore one in half getting it off and one of them's completely stuck to the chip so I'm just going to replace them back on the heat sink so they're all in one place. Uh, you can see the CPU paste has gone rock solid and pretty gunky so that, that that could do uh, with replacing but not going to do any of that until we've tested the HDMI port and the HDMI retimer chip because I believe that's what's uh, stopping this from displaying just having a quick check now just to see if the um, pins are all making contact with the pads um, just to make sure the HDMI port is actually fully sat down and in place where it should be. And just going to touch up the solder pads as well with a bit more solder, make sure they're reflowed and make sure they're all good. Um, yeah, the view on it's not great. I'm, I do need to get my camera set up on my scope, but currently for now this is the best we've got. Uh, once I've got that set up, we'll be able to see exactly in detail what we're doing. Um, but yeah, just touching them up with solder, making sure it's all good. Quick test. And if that doesn't solve it, then we'll have to replace the retimer chip. Okay, yeah, after testing that didn't work, so we'll we'll have to uh, replace the time, uh, retimer chip and see how it performs after that. Okay, just getting it reassembled, give it a quick test, and if the retimer chip hasn't done it, then unfortunately there's not much else I think I'm able to do uh, for this. Um... I'll have a little bit of a look into it and see, but I'm suspecting it's probably the CPU that's causing this problem, so I'll have a look. Okay, yeah, I've had a look into it, and uh, what what we've had a look at is the... There's also the ESD booster chip bypass. Um, I've tried that running a wire um, from the chip, and unfortunately that's still not fixed the problem so unfortunately this is more than likely the CPU
Thank you very much. Have a great day. Please like and subscribe for more.